Missing data can cause even the best analysts to draw the wrong conclusions from the data, even if they have the right expertise to understand the outputs. So in this video, I'm going to teach you how to recognize missing values, replace those missing values, or drop those missing values. Let's get started. In the notebook, we're going to focus primarily on pandas and use this to address missing values. So I've got a data frame here that I'm going to load into this notebook. You can see we have a couple of missing values denoted by the NAN. This is a, a missing value indicator. And this is important because we can use several techniques to take advantage of this key. So if you had an Excel file, this might be indicated by an empty cell or a CSV where there is an empty space between the comma separated delimiters. So the first thing we're going to do is determine if we have missing values or where they're located. So we can use the df.isNA to determine those missing values. And before I chain it with the sum, let me just show you what that output looks like. When we do this, we can see that we have a Boolean data frame of true and false values. If you can see where those missing values are located because they're indicated with the true there. So in this case, coffee 070 has all missing values for each of our columns, the percent coffee, the raw volume coffee to teaspoon, and the is adulterated coffee. So there's no data present. If we look at the coffee 303, we see that we have two missing values for the raw volume and the is adulterated. And for coffee 010, we have one missing value in the adulterated column. So a couple of things we can do is to use the sum and sum across axis one. And this will allow us to see the amount of missing values per sample. So we can see that for sample 070, we have three missing values. For 030, we have two missing values. And for 010, we have one missing value. So this is very important information for helping us to understand the quality of the data. If we set the axis equal to zero, we can see the number of missing values per column. So in the per coffee or percent coffee, we have one. In the raw volume, we have two. And in the is adulterated, we have three. So it really depends on the shape of your data and how you're attempting to assess this data or validate this data for you to determine which is the best axis to look at. So let's now move to dropping missing values. We know how to recognize them. So let's start doing something with it. There are a couple of different techniques we can use for dropping missing values. We can use the drop NA. In this case, we're going to set axis equal to zero and just say all. With this, we can see that if we compare this data frame to the original one, we are now missing sample 070 because this is missing all of the data. And that is what this how is telling us. We'll also note that 030 and 010 are still present with their missing values. There are other keywords you can put in here. So instead of all, we can use any, and this will eliminate any of the rows where we have missing data. And this is what happens when we have access set to zero. If we have access set to one, in this case, because each column has a missing value, we don't have any data in this data frame. If we set this to all, you see that again, we have all of the data now because each column has at least one non missing value value present. And this can be very important again, depending on the orientation of your data and how you're attempting to assess the quality of your data. For the next example of dropping a, we can use the other keywords that are part of this method. So we have the threshold parameter. And in this, we can set the threshold equal to zero. And this threshold parameter is telling us the number of values that need to be present in each of the rows. So we have coffee zero seven zero. We're saying there needs to be at least three values present. In this case, because there are not three non-missing values present, it is eliminated. Same with coffee 030 and 010. If we lower this threshold down to two, you see that now the 010 has come back because there's at least two values that are present and that are non-missing. And if we set this threshold to one, you see that we get 030 back because there's at least one real value present. Notably, the data frame has not been modified. If you look at the actual data frame by calling the DF argument again, you see that we still have all three missing values. That is because by default, the in place argument equals false. So all we're seeing is a view of the data. We're not actually seeing the data frame being modified. To do that, we have to save this as a new variable, say DF1, or set the in place equal to true, which I highly discouraged because this will hinder your ability to chain methods. I talked about this in a different video, check that out. But this is another way to ensure that you're actually moving the data along that you want and not just getting a view of the data and moving forward. Another way to handle dropping your data is to subset the data. And subsetting will allow us to address the column that we are going to base our 
missing values on. So let's use the is adulterated column and let's keep everything else the same. And you can see that if there's a missing value in the is adulterated column, you drop all of those values. So each of those samples from before has a missing value in the is adulterated column. And this is important because maybe one of your columns is very critical. Say you're missing an index or you're missing a key parameter that will hinder the quality of your data in the future. So this is a great way for selecting that. So once we have missing values and we're able to address them, let's say we drop the rows where all the values are missing, we might want to fill those data in. And the first that we're going to use is the interpolate method, which is great for numerical data. In the first case, we're going to drop the rows where all the data is missing. And you can see that we're now assigning that new cleaner data frame as DF1. And you see we're missing 070 because there's no data present. In the next cell, we're going to use the interpolate. So we're going to take the raw volume coffee teaspoon data and interpolate that using a linear fit. And what this would do is look through each of the rows and look for the logical number based on a linear relationship. There's several other quadratic, polynomial, and spline fits through the connection with SciPy. But in this case, we're going to use the simple linear. And you can see that 5, 4, the logical number would be then be 3. And so the way this method works is that it will attempt to fit a linear regression in this series here. You can see that we have 5, 4, a missing value, 2, and then 1. And so based on the algorithm, this will assume the missing value to be 3 based on that linear relationship. If you run the cell, you see that it has now replaced the missing value here with a three. And this is exactly how it works. Again, this is great for when you have missing numerical values and there is a linear relationship, as is the case for a lot of analytical data in particular. And I want to remind you that in order for this to be updated, you have to now assign the column either to this new column that's cleaner or better yet, make a new column so that you keep the original and you can validate those results against the cleaned up results. So in the case where we have categorical data, like we do for our is adulterated column, and we have missing values, it could be good to use the fill in a method instead. And so what this will do is take the is adulterated column and fill the missing value using a forward fill or F fill approach. And to explain that, it will look for the first instance of a missing value Look in the cell above, and you see that if we have this categorical assignment here as yes, and it will fill the remaining missing cells below with yes until there's a new value present. And so in this case, this missing value will be filled with yes. It will go down, look for the next missing value, go up one cell, and you see that again as a yes. If this were a no, and we're using forward fill, this would be filled with a no, and then proceed Accordingly. We also have the option for backfilling, which will go in reverse and several other fill parameters we can use. And so let's run this here. Now you see that when we run this, we get a future warning and it tells us that the series fill in a with method is deprecated and will raise an error in the future version. And so what this is wanting us to do is that instead of using fill in a, it wants us to use the F fill method and forward fill in this fashion here. So you saw that the error goes away. And depending on your pandas version, either that meant they won't work at all because it's been that change has happened depending on when you see this video, or you may not get the error message if you have a significantly older version of pandas. But when you see those future warnings, it's usually best to make that adaptation so that if you ever update your environment, your code will still work even with newer versions of pandas, numpy, scipy, etc. And so this fill in a is a great method for categorical data. Next, I want to show you a slightly more advanced way to fill in missing data, and that's using conditional statements. Now, in this section, I'm going to regenerate DF1, where we're just going to drop the rows. We have all the missing variables, and that leaves us with coffee 030 with a missing value in the raw volume coffee teaspoon column. And thus, we're going to leverage the relationship between the per coffee and this column here, which appears to be the numbers are different by a factor of 10. So this 100 is a 10, 90 is 9. You can see that relationship here. And we can use this relationship and method chaining to fill this data in dynamically based on our understanding of the structure of this data. So if you can see that, we can use loc to begin subsetting our data. We can then look in the raw volume coffee teaspoon data for where we have missing data. So this is NA as the method we began with. In the row where this is true, we're also going to look in this particular column and fill that missing value in 
based on that relationship. So now we're going to fill this missing value in with DF1 per coffee divided by 10 at that particular location. And when we run the cell, you can see that coffee 030 is now filled with 3.0. So this is a slightly more advanced technique, but you can now see how we can combine our ability to locate missing data, either drop it or fill it, and then even then fill it with either using linear interpolations, forward field, back fields, or building our own conditional statements through a combination of these techniques. If you have a completely empty data frame, you should watch this video. If you want to follow this series where we go over more of these techniques, like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.